Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to look at in this video is I'm actually going to answer uh, all the questions or most of the questions that were asked about the Unify Express. Uh, so I've got these running. I'm actually tomorrow replacing my my main router to do some testing because a lot of people want to see the throughput speed. So that is that is coming. But uh, I thought what we'd do is we'd go through and we'd answer a lot of these questions. And I have been experimenting and tinkering with these boxes. So uh, let's take a look at the first one. Uh, Mr. Clean says, uh, I'd be interested in coverage on this. Uh, I have a U6 mesh that gives very adequate coverage in, in nearly 1,800 square feet. So uh, this says that the theoretical coverage is 1,500 square feet square feet per device. Now that's under ideal conditions, right? That's not with walls and microwaves and all kinds of things, you know, going around making noise and and um, so your mileage may vary, but I mean. Uh, the price is not bad on these, but what you could do is you could just get one of these units, make it the, uh, the you know, controller, replace your cloud key Gen 2 with this and get rid of your USG and then use your uh, U6 mesh. And now you've got two APs. All right, uh, Dangle Sun says, I'd love to see a full test on one gig. That is coming. However, this device does not support IDS, IPS, or what Ubiquity calls suspicious activity. It does support country blocking, ad blocking, um, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> next question. Thank you for your hard work. I've been watching your video for many years. The Unify Express seems uh, is the upgrade step for my five remote offices, which USGs are deployed. I hope the site-to-site -site VPN will work just fine with SonicWall. So a couple of things. If you're deploying this at a site and you need failover, you're going to have to come up with an alternate plan. And when I say failover, internet failover, because this only has one WAN port. So you would have to plan for that. The other thing uh, to note is, yes, it will work with your SonicWall VPNs. We can make this work with probably 95% of all site-to-site -site VPNs that exist. Um, another question asking about the throughput with ID, IDS IPS. It doesn't run IDS IPS. So, uh, it's, it's a separate device in the ecosystem. Um, so, uh, let's talk about this. So somebody is, uh, comparing this to Eero and yeah, uh, WIFs, ISP, fiber providers, you could use this because now this overcomes the, uh, you know, the ISP AirCube doesn't do gigabit. This will do uh, gigabit. Um, but yeah, so you can have one unit and mesh to other units. This supports five devices. And somebody wanted to know, is it this plus four other devices or is it this plus five devices? I'm going to test that and we will follow up on that. I'm going to test that um, tomorrow. Next question is, uh, would this be useful for securely accessing your primary network while traveling? So it depends. So if you're site to site, so the site to sites can now with Unify use fully qualified domain names. And if you're using uh, IPsec, the easiest thing is to have uh, routable IPs, non-RFC IPs on your uh your WAN interface. However, OpenVPN just needs one side to have a public IP. So yeah, you could definitely configure this thing for site-to-site -site VPN and uh, carry it with you. It would make a great travel router. Uh, Jackson Campbell says, there, there's some upside for putting it at your grandma's house, but if you're installing anywhere that might need other applications such as Protect, you might consider something else. You could pair it with an MVR, but at that point you'd need a rack. And why not have a UDM Pro if you have a rack? Well, a lot of people don't want to put all their eggs in one basket. And I'm a fan of that design. But I do like the all-in-one uh, devices as well. I think all of these devices have a time and a place. Um, now, Ubiquity says this supports 60-plus clients, right? So, but what's really telling to me is they're saying 60. So I'm not sure that I would go... Uh, much past that. 
Um, and you know, I mean, if you don't need a switch, if you only need a router and a wireless AP and you have one computer hardwired or you get a small switch or something and throw it in here, this thing is going to be, it's going to be uh, good. Do you know whether it's possible to use port 443 when configure, configuring a VPN server on this device? So there are, uh, WireGuard allows you to uh, configure your port. So you could theoretically throw 443 on here. Um, I don't know whether it would work or not, but it's there in the configuration. That's something else that we could try. Yeah, and they are selling out fast. They are getting them uh, back in stock. So, all right, so the next person asked, Willie, can the light be used with an alien router? Uh, so, no, you cannot adopt this in with the Amplify Alien. This is Unify only. So, I mean, you could use them in the same place, but they would be used independently. Um, and here's another comment, you know, that says this is good. This and the UXG, great from an MSP management standpoint. But if you need talk, protect other apps, then you've got to... Um, you know, have a cloud key or UDM, that is, that is correct. Uh, that was from Mike Scott. So yeah, if you're going to run other apps, you need other pieces of hardware. Um, yeah, so uh, this, once again, this does not run suspicious activity, which is IDS, IPS. Uh, Hubie Van Kanubi asks, did I understand correctly that the Unify Express can also be used as a WLAN LAN converter? So if you were to mesh this with another unit or another uh, access point, yes, you could plug into the LAN and bridge the LAN over the Wi-Fi. So yes, you could use this uh, in that mode. Uh, I am going to do a cloud key to Unify Express uh, or to a UDM, it'll work. It'll be cloud key gen one migration to newer uh, devices. Could this take the place of a cloud key and just function as a controller and access point? Uh, no, uh, it can function as an access point if you're jo joining it to another Unify OS device. And I want to talk about that because I uh, tried my damnedest to get this thing to adopt to a non Unify OS device. I tried to get it to adopt to my cloud key locally and I tried to get it to adopt to um, a, a self-hosted controller that's not on a Unify device. And I could not get it. Every time I SSH in and set the in form, it just changed back. So if that's coming, that may be coming in a later firmware. I don't know. But as of right now, the only way I could get this to adopt as an access point was into a Unify OS uh, console. Happy Wednesday, Willie. Is it compatible with Site Magic? Yes, Billy Bork. Uh, you can do Unify site-to-site -site magic VPNs using the Unify Express. Um, you cannot, uh, the next question is, client has a MiFi and wants to use it for WAN. Can you use this to connect to the MiFi and does it support something similar to bridge motor IP pass-through? So that is actually going to be on your gateway device. So whatever your uh, MiFi device is, that's going to be the device that is going to actually do the bridge mode. All Unify OS consoles cannot have NAT disabled. They have NAT enabled and firewall dis, dis, uh, enabled by default. You cannot undo that. Neither should you try to do that. W. Mool says, 100% my next router controller AP. Nice looking device. Uh, William Miller says, I'm guessing the 60 clients only applies to the wireless ac uh, access the wireless aspect of it. And I would go back and I would say that is probably correct based on, you can see over here, I've got the Unify Express 60 plus connected Wi-Fi devices. So yeah, and this thing can have multiple VLANs and, you know, uh, we can set it up so it can serve out hundreds of thousands of IPs. So yes, I believe you're correct that the 60 clients is the Wi-Fi devices. Uh, what kind of processor is in this? I don't know. What kind of processor is in this? I don't know if it's like the XG Lite, maybe it is, or uh, the UXG Lite. Um, it's possible, and uh, that you know, but they had to take away IDS IPS to make the controller and everything run in the Wi-Fi. That I don't know. Uh, we are going to do the test, the five connected devices. 
Um, we are going to do the uh, the speed test. Could you run Unify Express as a cloud key with the Unify Lite as the main unit? Uh, so that is a, a basket of worms, Tom, and I don't know. And if you want to comment on this video and clarify what that is, then maybe uh, we can we can do that. Uh, Brett Schwartz says, does it have the option to bypass the gateway and bridge bridge it to an existing router? Uh, for example, my mom's home has Verizon Fios and Fios cable boxes. In order for the cable boxes to work, you have to use the Fios router. In this situation, I would like to put the Unify Express in bridge mode and have the Fios modem gateway perform the routing. You cannot put these in bridge mode. They do not. They are, they are, they want to be the NAT. They want to be... Uh, the DHCP, the firewall, the whole bit. Now, you can disable DHCP. I said that, but it wants to be the gateway. Ev Evolb Studio says, would this handle four 4K CCTV cameras and site-to-site -site VPN? So uh, if you have those 4K cameras, whatever your bandwidth is, that's really the consideration you're going to have to look at there. Yes, this has more than enough horsepower to uh, to allow that data flow to happen. Uh, and yes, you could do it through a site-to-site -site VPN, but it, like I said, it's going to depend on, first of all, all of your camera settings, how much bandwidth is needed, and how much bandwidth you have available. David Wright says, I guess if my UAP ACLRs go e EOL, I could replace them with these. Yes, you absolutely could if you have a Unify OS console. So if you've got a UDM, uh, UDM Pro, UDM SE, UDR, uh, Unify Dreamwall. Um, the only, like I said, I couldn't get this to adopt to a cloud key or to um, uh, to uh, a self-hosted controller. Um, maybe that's coming in a new firmware or whatever. But if you're using LRs, LRs, in my opinion, I know they sell a ton of them. We do not design with LR APs. It can cause a lot of problems. I go ahead and I'd swap your LRs out now. Um, so. Uh, T. Shadley asks, so how is this different than the UDR? So this only runs a network application. That's it. And it it's only a 2x2 two two Wi-Fi 6 AP, and it only has a single Ethernet port in the back. However, it can be used as a standalone AP. The UDR cannot. And the UDR, of course, has expandable storage, can run all the Unify apps, can't run them all simultaneously, but can run all of the Unify apps. Um, instead of using two of these, why wouldn't you use one of these and a U6 plus as a secondary AP? And you could absolutely, you could absolutely do that. Uh, Chris Robinson says, I currently have two U6 mesh in mesh mode. Do you think this will be a better option? I would go ahead and leave your two U6 meshes in instead of swapping out. I know these devices are cool. I'll leave affiliate links down below so you can hop on these and the other uh, Unify OS consoles. Um, and you know, if you want to learn more about Unify and the ecosystem, I mean, it's the, the entry to barrier, uh, with a device like this, I mean, this is down to 149, uh, USD. Um, and yes, it, it is just temporary outages and it does look like the 2008 Apple airport express. Somebody was posting those, um, uh, somebody was posting those pictures. Uh, David Anderson says, I have many locations running Cloud Key Gen 1, stuck on, stuck on 7.2.97. Where, where all it does is control the network, would this thing work to replace those? It depends how many other Unify devices you have at those sites, uh, David. But yeah, I would say this is a viable replacement if you don't go over that, that five device limit. And we're going to test that. Uh, Terry Johnson says, nice compact travel router. Absolutely. Uh, it does do so the magic site-to-site -site VPN. Let's see. Yes, it does the site-to-site -site VPN. And uh, Pablo T. Brave says, this or the UDR for $50 more, you get 4x4, a MIMO, and a PoE switch. And that is true. But some people don't need that. Uh, small apartments, things like that. If I uh, am deploying point-of-sale, uh, hardware. If I'm nesting inside of another network, I can use this. And that's where that site to site magic, you know, so we can start sticking these devices 
in some uh, pretty cool places. So there is already a 3D printing file out there uh, for wall mounts for these. I'm going to ask Tim to print those for me um, and uh, uh, we'll mount some behind us here on the wall. The last question is, can this be used as a router? And uh, the answer is absolutely. This is a router by, by default unless you join it. So we're going to do some of those other hands-on tests. I just wanted to answer some of these questions real quick because I was seeing a lot of the same, same questions. So if you've got more questions, let me know down in the comments. And make sure you give this video a thumbs up, that you subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with uh, affiliate links for all of this gear that you see on the channel and a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting because you want to get your network straightened out or you want to get a VPN implemented or you want a, a network security tune-up or a voice over IP phone system, reach out at willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form that's right there on the front page and someone will reach out to you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to a vendor who can. That's our promise to you. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. Stay tuned. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.